and welcome to the CT Skills Live Levy broadcast. So today I'm joined by Cam, Head of Business Development, and Ben, Business Development Manager. So my name's Rachel, and they're going to just go through a few questions with me today about the Live Levy broadcast. So do you want to just explain a bit about both of you and how long you've been at CT Skills for? Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Cam Penglin, Head of Business Development. I've uh, been with CT Skills since April last year, so joined just before the levy kicked in. And we'll just pass you over to Ben. Hello everyone, my name is Ben Simmons. I'm the Business Development Manager of CT Skills. I've been with the company for about nine months, but I have been in training and employability for about five years now. Brilliant. So Ben, I'll start the first question with you. So what is one of the main challenges um, you think your clients are experiencing with the levy? Um, I think the main challenge, uh, Rachel, is kind of the understanding of the levy, how the levy can kind of benefit, uh, and just some of the details in how the levy works with, in terms of payments, courses, deductions, uh, and, and just getting the best out of the levy, to be honest with you. Um, I think with ourselves at CT Skills, we, we offer a lot of support in regards to that. Um, we cover a lot of sectors from manufacturing, uh, health and social care, child care, accountancy and finance, education, logistics. It literally is a broad range of sectors across uh, the East Midlands. Um, so with the levy, a lot of those conversations that we have kind of break down to their particular needs and every company is different and they're in different stages of kind of putting the levy in place. Uh, I think if I was to say one of the biggest challenges uh, for, for companies is just setting up the process of training to either match their on kind of onboard training or their existing training programs or those who don't have them uh, and that just comes at the start with the uh, dig, uh, digital apprenticeship service which okay. is basically an online account where the payments kind of go in and a company can see what is being deducted from their levy how much they've got to utilize over the year and, and how they can register with, with training right. providers so do how it. do companies go about setting up the account then if they haven't already done so so, oh, can you, uh, <laughs> perfect one for you. so basically what they need to do is they need to register online so there's a website called manageapprenticeships.gov.uk um, they need to register on there they need their PAYE reference number to link their account to HMRC um, every month if their payroll is over three million pound a year it's calculated on a monthly basis which equates to two hundred and fifty thousand pound a month so anything that they pay over £250,000 a month, 0.5% of that will be paid into their apprenticeship levy pot. And the government, I think they pay, take the payment out around the 22nd of every month. Um, so that m money is paid by the employer and placed into the apprenticeship levy account. And once the employer logs on, they can actually keep track of how much money they've paid in on a monthly basis. So that money accumulates and then as they enrol apprentices, they add the learner details onto their digital apprenticeship service account and allocate to their relevant training provider and then the money is taken out on a monthly basis the following month. Alright, okay, so um, obviously you're saying about the money going in, but what about the smaller companies who are under the threshold? So the ones that are under the threshold, I actually... Um, split companies and employers into three different divisions now. So we've got micro employers that are less than 50 employees and those employers um, don't actually have to pay a fee when they take on a 16 to 18 year old. Oh. Um, but they do need to pay a 10% contribution for anybody age 19 plus. And then we have non-levy employers who are employers that employ more than 51 employees and also have a payroll of less than 3 million. So they will automatically pay 10% contribution regardless of the age of the learner on the apprenticeship. And then obviously we've got the levy employers that pay into their levy pot. Okay, so obviously you've mentioned the courses that we do, Ben, but in terms of people who do um, maths or English courses, can they claim this through the levy? Um, we actually have a separate funding. We, well, we, well, one, we support functional skills for all our training programmes. Uh, for apprenticeships um, where needed and we'll do initial assessments beforehand um, but we also have separate funding for those who aren't ready to go on a program or they're looking just to improve functional skills and in East Midlands we can offer that service as well. Brilliant. Um, 
So are all the clients that CTS Girls work with set up with the account that you mentioned earlier, or are some of them still trying to get That's themselves set up? Or That's a good question. It's a mixed bag, to be fair. So what we've got is we've got an employer base that we're currently engaged with, and yet all of those people that we're engaged with have got levy accounts set up, and they've either set them up themselves or we've helped them to set them up. And then we are engaging with employers all the time. So again, we've got some employers that use multiple training providers, and then we've got some that aren't quite sure if they're a levy provider, a levy employer or not at the moment. So we can again advise on that. Um, and then we've got other employers that are levy employers, and they've set their DAS up. But then within DAS, they have um, a section where they have to sign an agreement with the ESFA. And they're not quite sure how to do that. Or I, I think that's the biggest one. I think a yeah. lot of people have set DAS up. Um, what is what is DAS? Uh, sorry, that's the Digital uh, Apprenticeship Service, right. which is pretty much like an online account. bank account yeah. system where the tax is deducted from the pay okay. for the company, and a portion of, of, of the levy, the levy what is deducted from the pay, goes into into this account online, and the companies can access that, and that's how they pay for training services. Um, and we find that a lot of companies have registered, they have set that up, mm. um, but they're not familiar with it and they're not confident and, and they just need a bit of kind of support getting through it. To be fair, after about an hour with ourselves, they, they're like, oh, this is quite simple. Quite easy. Quite yeah, that's easy. what I was going to say. I think a lot of companies worry about um, obviously signing up to this and, and obviously the stress of getting it all set up. So yes. what would you recommend to anyone who is worried about obviously getting themselves set up? There's, there's no obligation, just contact us. Um, right. We can support them through the process. Um, we can go out and meet with them and just, you know, if they've got their account set up, we can talk them through what the different menus are on the DAS account. Uh, and if they haven't got it set up, we can talk them through what they need to do in terms of contacting the HMRC. Um, they will need to get an activation code generated from the HMRC, and that can take up to five working days to arrive. So all of that information, we can talk employers through that. And like I said, there's no obligation. It's it's about educating people and making them understand what services are out there available to them. Okay, so Ben, obviously you, you did um, touch on a few apprenticeships earlier, but what are popular apprenticeships in terms of the levy? All depends on the, on the industry. Uh, okay. I mean, for instance, we, we have a huge uh, support in the East Midlands for uh, health and social care. Um, we do a lot with manufacturing companies and accountancy companies um, and it just depends on those individuals. So with levy companies they tend to be quite sizable companies and have various mm. departments within them. So they have accountancy and finance departments, yeah. so they might have one or two uh, uh, individuals who they're looking to either appoint to an apprenticeship with an accountancy or, as the levy offers now, existing staff can be developed, mm. which is a huge, right. huge change. So is that obviously management or anything like that could they yes. go into? Yeah, mm. it's, it's really exciting actually because what it offers is, so we've, we've worked with individuals who have gone to university, uh, maybe come out of their second year because yeah. it's not quite for them, joined up with a company. Now on the old kind of funding scheme, because of their prior tenure and they've gone to university, yeah. they wouldn't be able to be developed. Yeah. Now with the changes, the government uh, have given the opportunity for these individuals to now be developed. So they might have gone to business management at university, realised that that environment isn't the best for them to learn. They've come out and it was, no, you can't do anything else. You've got to yeah. fund everything yourself. Yeah. Oh, that's sad, isn't it? But now yeah, with yeah. the levy, that's not the case. So a training uh, manager can turn around and go, right, Josephine, or right, Steve, we're going to develop you and we're going to do an AAT programme mm. and we're going to use our levy to do it. Mm. So you don't have to be 16 to 24 then, is that what no, you're saying? No, this is another thing. So you, I mean, predominant when we say apprenticeship, I mean, we all think 16 to 18. Yeah. Mm. Um, but that's not the case. Um, an apprenticeship literally is learning whilst in work. Mm. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, and with the levy, this opens up a whole array of departments that can be developed. So it could be anyone who's finance it could be probably the biggest one is management yeah. uh, because managers it tends to be you, you get into management and there's not a huge amount of development or support it's progression, yeah. it's progression. Yeah. how do we do that and uh, CT skills like uh, offer some very good management programs through the Chartered mm. Management Institute and they're very very popular so yeah. I would say yeah definitely I mean in the last um, well seven or eight months since we've been engaging with employers and the funding rules have changed 
um, I've come across where I had a, a young lady who'd done a, um, a psychology degree right. and she'd achieved a 2 1, so she got a really good grade in her degree. And unfortunately, she's just not been able to find a job in that sector. So she's now working as a business administrator in um, a large levy employer. And even though she's got a degree, she's now eligible and she's now enrolled onto the level three business administration because that will help support her in her new job role. Yeah. Um, so I think the biggest message for us is, you know, it, it's not about age anymore. Um, the apprenticeship levy can be used for um, bringing on new apprentices. And when we say recruiting new apprentices, again, they don't have to be 16 to 18. We've had large levy employers that have taken on apprentices that have been in their 30s and 40s, even 50s in some occasions, where they've took them on as an apprentice on an apprenticeship contract and they've paid through the levy for them. Um, and then on the other scale, we've got um, an employer that um, last, last year took on a 17 year old and he did a level three business admin. He's 17 and this year we've just enrolled him onto a level three team leader supervisor standard. Yeah. So again, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are now. I think it's really, I think it's exciting times yeah. for training in, in across all the industries. Uh, so my name is Ben Simmons, I'm the Business Development Manager of CT Skills and I'm here with, with Cam Penglin. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself, Cam. Hi, if you're just joining us, I'm Cam, I'm Head of Business Development for CT Skills. Uh, and I'm Rachel, I'm Marketing Executive and um, we're just having a quick chat here today about the uh, levy and how it obviously benefits businesses. And Rachel just asked me a question in regards to management training, which is we've seen a huge pickup in terms of uh, levy applicable companies wanting to develop their existing staff. Uh, and management being one. Uh, and uh, probably a question I would like to ask you out there because this is something that I know that's quite popular on social media at the moment is uh, should levy applicable, uh, applicable companies be putting a little bit more focus on recruiting more apprentices and getting them in and using their levy for that? Or should they be focusing on uh, existing staff and developing them? Uh, is this a good opportunity now in the current climate for developing them? Uh, and I know there's a thing about age going on out there on social media, so I'd really like to know kind of your opinion out there on that. That'd be great. Um, so obviously one of the main issues um, today is a lot of people do start apprenticeships and they do end up wanting to move a job. Um, so what would happen if Elena started a programme um, and then obviously wanted to move to another company? What, what would happen with the levy then? So in terms of the levy uh, in that scenario, basically what would happen is the apprenticeship funding for that particular learner would probably be put on stop by their, the employer that they're leaving, um, but the, pro the, the learner, the work that they've completed up to that date would belong to the learner and we would look to support that learner into their next job role. So literally we'd keep in touch with the learner and we would um, ask them to ask their new employer if they can continue with their apprenticeship and if they can then we'd engage with their employer and we would get them either depending on what type of employer they are re-enrolled as you would say so to be fair the employer would stop making payments and if the new employer agrees then we just follow it through i think a big one from meetings that i've had is is what do are they able to claim the levy back from the investment that put into no. the staff member which they got which, no. which they can't like any training it is an investment in, in your staff. So I suppose, one, when appointing an apprentice, uh, we go through a very thorough screening process to make sure mm. this is the job that they want. It does happen, I'm not gonna lie, now and again, these are potential individuals that go in, but we, we offer traineeships to try and counter individuals who, who don't know what particular field they want to go into. Mm. So we do offer traineeships to support kind of directing individuals into what they want to kind of apprenticeship they want to go into. Mm. A thorough screening process and we have interviews with the individuals as do the companies when we appoint them. But they also it might be existing staff who have just been given that opportunity and they're moving and have invested some of the levy and then sadly it goes and you know when when making a levy plan and when investing in your staff, um, plan, plan, plan. Yeah, uh, yeah. And also, you know, talk to your training provider. You know, try and get a visit from from one of the um, tutors who's going to come out and support the qualification because yeah. this is this is what's going to kind of make sure that they know it's an investment in them and that that company is really loyal to them. So 
makes that possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've just checked a few of the questions coming in from you guys, and we are getting quite a lot coming in now. Um, so one of the questions that I've just received was, what will happen if a company doesn't pay the levy? Um, I think a few businesses are worried about that still. So HMRC have probably been in touch, or they yeah. will be in touch. Um, and once, I mean, they could be liable to a fine. And also, if a levy employer hasn't set up their DAS, and say, for example, they set it up this month, then they will still need to make a back payment as if they were paying from May 2017 last year. So they'll have to pay a lump sum into their levy pot. It is a tax, it's another form of tax, yeah. so they will be liable no matter when they set it up. But it's advisable to get it set up sooner rather than later. So Speak that you're with the account. finance department, get, yeah. get it sorted out. If yeah. you're using a, a third party finance, speak with them. I know companies who last year were over the threshold um, they're not sure if they're going to be this year, but speak. And it depends on the industry. Some yeah. companies like uh, logistics or, or, or manufacturing will have busy periods within the year where their payroll will go up and yeah. they'll have downtime when the payroll yeah. goes down. And obviously, they've got to balance out that. This is something that uh, CAM's quite good at in terms of creating yeah. calculators to forecast their levy payments. Yeah. And it's something we're willing to talk to and support yeah. to help. Them. So it's just a case of getting in contact with you. Yeah. Um, and the other thing as well to notice is that they have 24 months to use that money in their part. Oh, right. So if they, for example, that backlog of payment that they're going to have to make is going to be from May 2017. So if they are paying a big lump sum into their pot now, for example, then it doesn't matter that they've paid it in now. Those funds should have been in there since May 2017. Mm -hmm. So it'll be calculated. So effectively, they'll only have a year and two months to use that money rather than 24 months. Right. I think a lot of um, business worries are they're paying the money in, but what do their apprentices get out of it? Um, so is there any way you could obviously just let companies know what, what their apprentices yeah, will definitely. achieve? Yeah, definitely. So with the apprenticeship reforms at the moment, with the standards coming into play, and again, if people aren't sure of the standards, if they contact us, um, we can explain and we can send them various bits of information and links to websites that will guide them. But literally, with the apprenticeship standards, the idea is that people are going to learn new skills um, so we can support with that, the employers need to support with that and there is an element of 20% off the job training that employers and learners need to commit to. So with regards to that, it, there is a bigger picture in terms of what learners get out of it but I think it's a case of people like us in our position when we're going out and we're engaging with employers actually making them aware that okay this is the cost of the service or the delivery of the training for the apprenticeship but however we need to put a plan into place where you can actually allow uh, that where they'll be able to allow the apprentice to do 20% of the job but by the employer letting them do 20% of the job how is it going to benefit the company and the learner in the long term so um, I, think, I think it's training as a whole. I mean, it, it, I, I presume from that question you mean, you know, how, what are they going to get from staff? Um, yeah. And it just depends on the qualification and it depends on, on how the company is, is planning certain things. So, for instance, you brought up management. Mm -hmm. One of the things about uh, companies is they, they find attrition rates. People don't really, uh, companies, they yeah. need managers and things like this. Now, my, my counteraction to that would be, how much help and support and development has that manager had? Yeah. Because as a whole, and someone who has been in a management position, uh, I was quite lucky. I had a mentor, I had coaching, I had shadowing opportunities, and I know from a fact from seeing companies that that, that doesn't happen as a whole. Managers mm -hmm. tend to be left out there. So in terms of an apprentice or supporting someone in, in AAT or business admin, what you're doing is you're creating a relationship with an individual, you're yeah. building a bond, you're building loyalty, so these staff are going to stay, it's going to lower your attrition rates. You're creating someone who's going to learn everything about your systems, everything about your products, everything about your service, yeah. and they are going to be an expert, not just in their field or knowledge of what they're doing. <laughs> Technical problems there. Yeah. They don't like what I'm saying. I mean, CT skills, by the way. Um, but Welcome, CT skills. I've been to know that. Um, but they're going to create confidence with the individual, loyalty yeah. to the company. So, and they're, they're planning the succession. Yeah. So, you know, the apprentice from from day one, fifteen 
years down the line could be the finance director or the, the lead manager of that company yeah. and I know that to a pattern. Yeah. I, I mean a, a great example of that is one of the employers that Ben was working with um, over the last few months it took us about three months to actually plan the delivery for yeah. it but we've actually enrolled a cohort of 18 leaders yeah. and they work in a factory um, environment and all eight learners have actually been with the business for a while. They mm -hmm. started off as production operatives and they're now team leaders. And where they're struggling were, uh, was that they know the production side, but they were struggling to manage their team. So what we've done is through the apprenticeship levy, we've actually put them on a team leader supervisor qualification, but we've been able to work with the employer and sort of support them with the issues and the, the, the things, the modules that they want to yeah. concentrate on. So we've been able to put workshops into the delivery, for example, and build that into the programme. But it's it's easier to do that because we've been engaging with the employer. Yeah. It's a complete so, management programme. So yeah. anyone who's now going to come through the ranks and come up into management, mm. every single staff member of that level is going to have the same consistency. They're yeah. going to know how to report right. the same. They're going to know how to log. They're going to have to motivate staff yeah. and motivate. And that's just management. It's the same as it is accountancy. They're going to know the systems. They're going to know how to report. So any given individual, consistency of training throughout the business is going to be at the same level. So someone can rely on that individual to do the same job as the next person next person which makes a better working environment so much smoother exactly yeah. and it just yeah. brings that company up in terms of culture in terms of ethos and kind of values yeah. and more than that it gets them going and growing as a company which in, you know just develops the company as a whole um, increases their confidence yeah. yeah and you know the company's um investing in them and just across the board, that obviously it's going to improve their KPIs and their production levels, but it's, you'll have a motivated team. Right. Okay, so that's all the questions we've got time for today. Um, so I just wanted to obviously let everyone know out there, we are actually holding an apprenticeship forum on Friday at both our Nottingham and Derby centres. So if you are interested in an apprenticeship, or if you are a business and um, wanting to know a bit more about how you can have an apprenticeship join your company, then please get in contact with us and obviously book on and attend the um, Nottingham or Derby centres on Friday. Um, so I'd like to say a big thank you from myself um, and Cam and Ben. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you, Thank you very much.